This is the Action Age Scrambler that I'm currently restoring. I'm just going to make a quick video showing the operation of the transmission. Uh, there's a lot of questions about how these work and uh, how to get them working if they're if they're currently not working. So this may help some of you guys that have one of these machines and are trying to get it going. Uh, this one's been totally rebuilt. Um, there's a lot of new parts on it, uh, which generally means I've made the parts uh, because there's not a whole lot of stuff available for these. Aside from the, you know, generic bearings and sprockets and chains and stuff like that you can get. Um, but any of the hydraulic parts you're going to have to make or, if you're lucky, find good used parts. Um, so, yeah, so anyway, uh, some of the parts might look different uh, than what you're working on. Um, but generally, uh, this is going to be the same as a stock scrambler. Uh, so you've got the main shaft here driven from the centrifugal clutch from the engine. So anytime that clutch engages, the shaft is going to spin. That turns a disc on each side. This disc is uh, solidly attached to the shaft. That disc has the friction material uh, either bonded or riveted. In this case, it's riveted to that disc. So um, that engages with the secondary disc. The secondary disc is uh, has a sprocket attached to it, which turns the secondary jack shaft, another gear reduction, and then finally to the wheels. Uh, so if I roll the machine, you'll see everything's turning together. Um, so when you steer this thing, this one has a steering wheel. Some of them have sticks. They operate the same way. This has a, a master cylinder left and right. And when you steer one way or the other, there's a gear rack and pinion that pushes on one or the other master cylinder. So that master cylinder, when I steer left, you see the rod push in, it pushes fluid in that line. That line comes back here, pushes on that slave cylinder, which pushes a rod. There's a rod inside this slave cylinder all the way out to the end, pushes on this clutch fork. And you'll see when I steer left, the clutch fork pulls the discs apart. Uh, it does that because there's a bearing. On this disc, uh, there's a hub with bearings inside and there's a bearing outside that attaches to this, this fork. So that fork moves out, pulls the disc with it, separates it uh, from the, the friction material, and releases the drive to this side. Um, so as you steer, you know, that central shaft will be spinning as you're driving. You steer, it disengages drive. You see it pull apart there a little bit. You steer a little harder, it actually pulls this disc into the brake, the, uh, brake pads. The brake pads are mounted on this piece. Uh, the brake pads are also actuated by this uh, brake slave cylinder. I don't know if I can reach, I'll try and push that. I don't know if you can see that moving, but as I push the brake pedal, it pushes the brake disc. It leaves the drive engaged, um, so you'll still be driving straight or whatever, whatever you're currently doing. Uh, but it will apply the brakes. Um, so yeah, inside here, there's a. This is the slave cylinder that pushes the rod. Inside this uh, housing, there's a real heavy spring that is pulling uh, the disc, not the disc, pulling the um, the fork along with the disc in against the the drive disc, and that's what makes it drive. Uh, so if your if your drive is slipping. You could have a weak or broken spring inside here. You could have worn out friction material or missing friction material. A lot of times, originally they were bonded and a lot of times they'll fall off or fly off. Um, the other problem you could have is the, the bearings. There's, uh, like I said, there's a bearing housing that's welded to the hub of this disc. There are two bearings inside that slide on this shaft. This shaft is turned down to a small diameter on the end and the bearings have to slide you can see as the disc moves, it's obviously, you know, those bearings are sliding on the shaft in and out. Um, so if this thing's been sitting in water, you're going to have those bearings might be seized up to the shaft. And you'll have to take that all apart and either replace or uh, clean it up and lube it. And make sure that stays lubed and clean. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much it. If I forgot anything, I'll add a little bit onto the end of this video. Uh, but that should give you an idea how this works. Hopefully that'll help. Good luck. Okay, one more thing. Uh, the brakes are also hydraulic. It's a totally separate system. Uh, 
it's very similar in fact the master cylinder is nearly identical um, so when you push on the pedal there's a, a cantilever uh, mount here that's actually pushing a rod into the cylinder fluid comes out here this is your parking brake so you can lock pressure in you push the pedal down uh, turn this valve and it will lock pressure in the line but anyway push on the brake uh, fluid comes out here, builds pressure, comes back to, um, on this machine, it's on the, the right side first. It comes into the right side, builds pressure, comes out of there, builds pressure all the way across to the other side. Uh, so you're pressurizing both cylinders at the same time uh, with uh, one brake pedal. Um, so that's how that works. And again, you push on the brake, and it doesn't do anything with the... Uh, Sorry about that. It doesn't affect the drive discs. It'll they'll stay engaged, but it it moves the brake pad against the outer disc. And you can see that happening there as I push the pedal and stops the machine. Okay, one more quick note about bleeding the hydraulic system. Uh, you'll see each one of these cylinders has a, a bleeder on it with a cap. It looks like a regular grease zerk, but uh, you definitely do not want to put a grease fitting on there and pump grease in. It will basically uh, render the system inoperable. Uh, so what you need to, to bleed this is a modified grease gun with uh, ATF in it or whatever type of hydraulic oil you, you want to use. Uh, it's probably not real critical, but originally they specified ATF. Um, so yeah, you'll uh, one at a time unscrew that, attach your whatever pressure gun you have. Uh, I actually use something similar to a, like a Phoenix injector. They're used for automotive brake systems. Uh, it it builds high pressure and pushes fluid uh, through this fitting, um, hopefully pushing all the air out of the cylinder through the line, all the way back up to the master cylinder. On top of the master cylinder, I don't know if we'll see it, there's a fitting coming out the top with a hose attached to it, and that hose comes over here to this bottle uh, to catch the excess fluid. Um, so as you're pumping fluid in the back, you're going to push all the fluid, the old fluid. Uh, this is leaking now. I got to put this back on. Uh, you'll push all the air and old fluid out all the way through the lines up through here. Um, starts coming out the top, and you'll see it start to fill up the bottle. So you got to watch um, and just you know make sure you don't overflow the bottle. You can see there's not a whole lot in this one. So that bottle isn't required for operation. It's only there to catch when you're bleeding. Each one of these master cylinders has a, a built-in reservoir. It's actually a machine chamber inside, in the top side. Uh, and as long as you have no leaks and everything's working right, there's plenty of fluid in there uh, as a reserve to operate the system. In fact, it's very slight chance that if that were to, to run low, say you have a leak in the back, and that runs low, very slim chance that it's actually going to pull fluid back out of the bottle. I think there is a dip tube in there. Um, but chances are you're going to have problems um, if it gets to that point. Um, but like I said, for normal operation, there's a reservoir built into the master cylinder, and it will work just fine without the bottle. Um, again, same thing with the brake cylinders. In this case, uh, because one feeds the other, there's only a, a bleeder on one side. So this will push across and then up to the master cylinder. And that master cylinder has the same fitting on the top, and it's teed into the same line as the steering cylinders. So it'll all, all three of the bleeders will push back into the same bottle. 